So we're on a tour with the uh, Weiler corporate headquarters. Your laptop screen went wrong. Uh, it just kind of came up with a PC. Actually, I use that quite a bit on web access or bringing people in. What dashboard do you keep up in? Uh, you know, I rotate through so many things. It's more over time. I've got the dashboard down to the level. That's just good for me. We have a full time media buyer for traditional right here. Really yep, we're in house. I'm actually filling this office in two weeks with someone I just hired. We have a full time video producer and editor, and I'll show you our studio when we go over there. And this is more expansion for e commerce. Another office for e commerce. And this is the conference room I normally use. We've got nice cool monitors and all that good stuff. I'm going to take you upstairs today. <laughs> <laughs> so we're heading into the back of the Weiler corporate headquarters here yeah. with Kevin. He's giving us a tour. This is awesome. Kevin, Kevin. Kind of a story behind I'm not like getting into these. Huh? Uh, we got one really cool car I have to say, but there's, uh, I think, 2425 in the collection. And if you walk around this way. And Kevin, whose cars are these? These are Jeff's and his son David has some. Um, nice. Is there anything with a rumble seat? Is that a real Duke of Hazard car? Like in this show? Or? Check this yeah, out. Uh, there's a bunch of replicas out there. Uh, David, they all the cars run. That day we got this one because the cops wanted to get their pictures. <laughs> That's oh, really? the one I always put on Dave Mariah. We have this thing going back and forth on Facebook because he wants that car and so do I. Uh, it's Marauder. actually got the original window Marauder sticker, original that. tires. Does it really? Marauder wasn't even fitting that. Oh, I know. He's a monster. This is absolutely amazing back here. The original dealership built in 1973. That's a one to one scale. And if you actually go to the Tavia, that building is now torn down. This building's a bank, but that's part of why they put that in here. And where was this originally? Uh, the Tavia is about 15 minutes from here. And then if you look at the air conditioner on there, kind of closely in over here, we actually have projectors on the wall where we can project video on this office. Wow. Wow. Did any guys follow the uh, the auction they had out in Nebraska this year about the guy that would keep all his cars at the Chevy dealer at the end of the year and he wouldn't get rid of them? Mm. So he had, he had about 400 cars. At the end of the year, if he didn't sell all his 1961 Chevy pickups, he kept them. Oh, whoa, 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 okay, I didn't hear about this. And he, he had a million wow. dollars. Wow. He's got a 66 truck, so I'm going to show you, which they just drove for the first time today. Five original miles, seats still in plastic. But you're going to see what happens to the truck after it's sat in the field for 50 years. No, they looked really terrible. They looked they really did. terrible. And but they uh, said it was a million dollars worth of cars. Well, we've got a lot of This is incredible. Yeah, I love this stuff. <laughs> the one in the corner. They got it turned over, and yesterday the clutch was seized up. And today, when I was meeting with Cash, I hear him running and he drove it out. So he's got it fixed and running. Uh, so this is a one to one Yeah, we'll go inside. Replica. But yeah, this was the original <laughs> building. You paid oh, the I mean, car. That is so, so crazy. crazy. Yeah. Let's get a picture of you in there with it. Joe West. Uh, I don't think you want to stand on the desk. Jerry, that's what you uh, should be driving. I think, uh, are you guys? I'm going to say you just run up on the road. That's a sharp looking yeah. car. We'll come back and find it. If he's here, he'll step up and say hello. Car? One of them. Yeah. It's funny because when he drives different cars and we put this in here, I ask my guys in the train, which car would you like to take home? They're like, we'll take the Bentley. I'm like, no. It's like, what, $200,000 a car? I don't know. Uh, no, the Bentley, what, which one is this? This is like 170. It's not bad. Yeah, you know what your silver car is?
Joe, isn't that your truck you had as a as a toddler? And this is also a Nash. Um, big picture. Each one of the cars took play as a meaning, and he was a big Superman fan. <laughs> That's what Lois Lane was. Oh wow. This is one I was just telling you about. That. Yeah. No, I did read about this. He had. Uh, they were all brand new. He never sold them. Uh, but they just. So they used to have a wood bed, right? All the wood rotted out. Should have lost the dirt on them. No, uh, it's yes. sat in a field. If you look inside, you see the plaster and the trees that got fibers in them. How did? What did he? Why did he leave them in the field? If my we have a dedicated tech that works all this. If he has his iPad, he'll show you. There was actually trees that was next to the golf course, and the cars were in there, and, some, and they just cut the trees out for the auction. In some cases, the trees were growing through the car. But there were some cars there that went for a couple hundred grand, that, you know, that weren't in as bad a shape. I think he did keep some on the roof. Uh, I like that they care so much about the presentation. I can't answer that. I think the guy was... I like that they care so much about the presentation. You actually put it in the place. Hey, this is actually better than when we first put it in here. It's kind of flatbed. But we had to put tires on it, obviously. You know, part of the reason he decided to sell is that they were starting vandalizing the cars, and almost all of them were missing the radiators because of the scrap. The good news is, if we were to restore it, it has all original parts, and that's usually your biggest yeah. aggravation. Yes. Yep. Um, that's, that's what the tire looks like when they've got them. Yeah, he got, yeah, that is, that was the spare. And, uh, is that the spare? Is that one of the ones? That's probably on one there? of the ones yeah, that's on probably there. on there, yeah. I know we just did the master cylinder. And David was talking about Take all the cars run. Well, we don't want to put mine on it. It's recording. It's not going to take a picture. Wow. Uh, Stop recording. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Is it only listen to your voice? <laughs> yes. It doesn't recognize Joe Webb. Uh, uh, not many I've driven one, what, not that, but I've driven a column tip one time, had a fit with it. We had a lot of them in Australia. That's what we put up. We went on those. No, I kind of followed some really? time, but... Uh, yeah. It's some sort of acrylic thing over it or something. You ever drove a manual? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the last time I've been. That's so I'm impressive. Back, I just on the right side of the car. I went to Japan one, and I'm driving on the left side, American, and had to drive right side yeah. with the shift on the column. On, I'm just having yeah. a hell of a time trying to drive. Even in Aruba, you were, they drive in the. No, on the Aruba, they drive on the opposite side of the road, but where usually when you drive on the opposite side of the road, you, the steering wheel is the other, the other one. In Aruba, the steering wheels are where we normally have it, but you still have to drive on the other side of the road. It's really off putting. <laughs> Very nice. I like that. <laughs> so, the race. So what is this Pride and Joy, by the way? Let's so jump on this Pride and Joy. I think. That's what I'm seeing. I know. I'm. That was like his first car down there, not the actual first car yeah, with the, his uh, jacket in front of it. I think the green one here probably has the most sentimental meaning because when he moved out west as a young boy, he says he remembers standing up looking over the dash and he was, it was a big move. I'm going to show you a video upstairs. You can see that. Um, What's the oldest? I don't know. I've got Roy. Really. Does he have a name of the Rumble seat? Oh, I never see him. I don't think so. Though. Now the race team we got rid of when 08, 09, when the market tanked and it was either cut people or cut that. And that's just a big hole in the ground for money in oh, I bet. as it is. We actually won Daytona with it right out of the gate. Really? Which was pretty cool. Well, let me take you back and show you ours. Yeah, you talk about a story to tell. You guys, you guys are telling it with this one room. Oh, that's crazy. So we have a, a dedicated technician that works all the cars, all the cars do run, except the race car doesn't have an engine. Is this just for the cars in here? Well, that, and if we're going to shoot a car for the studio, we can go in the wash bay. And then I'm going to show you the studio next, we can go in the studio. I think there might be somewhere in there. See the lights on. So this is the Weiler Studio. Can I set a guy around? So they can wash the cars, they can fix the cars, and they can drive them right in here. Dave Weiler? Hey, Dave, good to see you, David Weiler. Doing okay? Yeah. 
Hey, Dave. How are you? Eric Dave Wells. Wyler. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. I'm just doing hey, a little recording. Dan Dorsey. Dan Dorsey. Jim, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Hi. Jim Simon, how are you? How you doing? Eric Mills. Eric Dan Dorsey. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jim Simon. How are you? Hey, Jim. How are you doing? Eric Mills. Nice to meet you. This is impressive. You All right. cheering in the background? Yeah. I'm cheering in the background? Yeah. Yeah, ready to go. She's a Cadillac here, so I'll get a couple pictures if you want. You walk in and get an opportunity. We've been here 9 o'clock trying to do this one spot. <laughs> well, we can turn them on. Yeah, the Next time I'm going to exactly. I'm ready when you guys are, okay? Jeff Weiler Cadillac has always provided a world-class dealership experience. The Cadillac Seasons Best also includes fantastic incentives. Take advantage of total Cadillac incentives of $5,000 on the Cadillac ATS, or choose the Cadillac CTS or XTS and take advantage of $6,000 Cadillac incentives. And every new Cadillac includes OnStar security, navigation, and no charge factory scheduled maintenance. The season's best offer and soon. That's Jeff Weiler Cadillac on Route 4 in Fairfield. So that was 28, David. So we also have an yeah. audio box in the camera. Hey, read that again. We're doing yeah. that audio yeah. or not, but we'll, we'll step out. That's great. Thanks, David. Hey, so, it's easier with an audience. Right? Nice. Yeah. Audience. What's that? Easier uh -huh. it is with a bigger audience. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, thank you, bro. Nice to meet you guys. If you notice, it has the curvature, and they can do the full infinity mm -hmm. uh, effect when they pull out the uh, the car. Oh, you, so you bring cars in there and shoot video, or we or? do. Uh, the biggest. I mean, this is we have a big emphasis on it. That's a cutting edge studio. We have the moon station. Uh, so, but it enables us. And how long does the green screen and nice camera mm -hmm. sound? I mean, so we can. Is there, do we have a teleprompter in that camera too? Yeah. In fact, now when I do my digital dealer drive sale, it's really easy. It takes me two minutes yeah. to throw it up. There. That's a killer setup. Um, yeah. But we can shoot a commercial scene as soon as we get the rebate or incentive. Our only delay at this point is just about a 24-hour queue to get in the station's lineup. Right. But our websites, we can get video up immediately. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a portion of it for TV and whatnot, mm -hmm. and we have the radio studio, but then we were able to pull out you say that, that's true. The, uh, I'm going to here. Brian, uh, uh, I had Phil Sir in yesterday because I'm still using him for the video player. Really? Because mm, you, you get up the monthly specials at the beginning and get these clients, yeah, and we're so, so backed up and we're and stuff that it, it is more uh, We open this up uh, every Friday and we drink. No, we don't. This is all NASCAR memorabilia, and we do events. We'll open up the glass. We have a full commercial kitchen, so uh, we can cater. So I've got like internet team leaders next week, and I can feed them and everything. Which is nice. Wow. Right, so the Cadillac Seasons Best Offer is a yeah, freezer. <laughs> and it's got all the. Okay, we're going to go out the front here. Brian up to say, oh, wow, this is really great. Actually, spent a lot of time with Brian. He's uh, most of the time working on these glasses. And bounce a lot of bouncing back and forth and stuff. Well, here, here's the truth about digital attribution is it, it's a fill-in. It's, it's subjective to thoughtful. <laughs> if you want to assign attribution. A lot of people will say that's a chick's car, too. What's that? A lot of people say that's a chick's car. Because yeah. you can't just assign attribution to every single influencing factor. These things are so hard to find in good condition. How do you get attribution of what is going on? And I would say true car. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I would say true car would be that no matter what, if there was the 18.2, they could still have to reach it. You can buy into the true car way of life. So this is uh, my favorite part. Yeah, this is our training facility. We actually have a dedicated entrance. Um, I've got three projectors, and then all cables have plug-ins. So if this organization, every single salesperson, every manager is trained on how to work in it. If you don't want to do it, you're not working in it. And that comes from the top down. Every and that's why you're trying to do your internet dealership philosophy. That's right. But it, Even though I fought against it and still won yeah. the debate. Well, no, no, and it's, it's, easy to, <laughs> it's easy to win on the side of against internet dealerships just for the fact that most dealerships haven't hired with that in mind. 
So if you're only hiring with that in mind and, and training them up, then that's great. But otherwise, I guarantee you there's people that have been filling in some of these while they've worked for 25 years who have no desire to handle these. Boy, they've had to come over. On the man, mid man, mid level management side, they just don't come over. You guys don't have separate internet departments, then? It's a mix. Of some of the stores, everybody works for leads. Yeah. Some of the stores will have a, a dedicated team that works for email leads. Yeah. Yeah. But as we get overflow, every person has to be trained on how to do it. Because the classic dilemma is I've sold this customer three times. I've been working 25 years. And now they come in through the internet. And I'm going to lose my customer to the internet department because I don't know how to work the internet. Well, that's how we turn them around. Well, if you're going to want to retain that, you need to have, understand how to work. But even if they department. submit an internet lead, it'll automatically ping them if they've got them, own them in Vin Solutions. So uh, you might not even find the internet lead. It just goes to their box and they never follow up with it. No. We were, we were taking all, we were forcing the lead out of our hands at that point. Now yeah. they're getting it, but they have to prove to us that they've been paying our money. Yeah. And I'll say a little bit about that. We got, what, some, what, we got some mystery shots for tomorrow. Yeah, well, I hope they did all right. Of course, I'll probably run embarrassed. Okay. What do you do with uh, so you know you've been really successful? You've got this huge database of customers of service and sales. Is anybody working that? Forget get new internet leads or even with people. Anybody working that? Is Cliff here? Mm -hmm. You want to bring him and have him join us, okay. please? Um, you know, it's kind of a mix of the stores and the approach, and a lot of them they go into an orphan account. And then each month, as those people are popping up, the manager can assign them to people that are either new or are working leads aggressively, and they get them. Some of them let them build up for a while and then farm them out. And I've got a couple stores where they do work those separately, and they have like a dedicated, if you want to call it, BDC person or whatnot that works that database. That's still a success. Because one of the issues from yesterday, from, from my retail days, you know, 15 years selling drugs pricing people in Orange County and Southern California. Stages in the brain, move to four size because they've got pencils on paper. Mm -hmm. Probably can't charge. But between two of us, we were selling a couple hundred cars a month in the end. Wow. And our customers were our customers. I mean, go back to who owns the customer. Mm -hmm. Because we've been there for so long, that longevity of tenureship, that we built the relationship with the. Yeah. So and we, I mean, back in the old days, writing letters and thank yous and calls ourselves. Oh, yeah. But those the original CRM? Well, I mean, yeah, but that's why I'm asking. It's like, be, because you know, we, this, we'll discuss more about it tomorrow, man, but, no, but we took them from, you've already been here, you love us in service. We, we even looked at it in an infantile way, like they might have been here six times for service, but we don't know how much they spent, but they must have spent a ton of money in service. Mm -hmm. So why we ripped their head off on a car sale here. So we try to migrate everybody to that buying cycle of like, I don't want to sell you a car, I want you to order it. Because I want it to come in today, be delivered today. So I want to have you have the exact car that you wanted. Um, I can sell it very inexpensively compared to the market price because I don't have any expenses. Flooring's gone, insurance is gone, everything else. I'm a perfectly happy customer. Anyways, that's Cliff Bank. Yeah. Welcome, good to see you. We'll catch you up here. Somebody. What's going on, man? <laughs> Can you take pictures with me? I gotta pull mine out later. You can show me some tricks. Have you seen the golf app? No, I haven't looked. Dude, I'm still figuring it out because I have been buried with 14 budgets and it's kind of been sitting in a box. I played with mine a little bit and I really need to work. Yeah, I'll get you set up. No, There's a bunch of new stuff. You change your shoelaces when you change your Sometimes I yes. called my wife, who you've yeah. met and know. Yes. So yes. She knows she knows yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you're. It's really Look at that. So, uh, I mean, I guess you know one of the, the things is uh, if you filled out that survey. I did. Uh, yeah, and I know know that you did. And some other people, even from within your own organization, said uh, their quintessential problem is keeping sales managers and sales people trained on the way of the internet. Yep. So if you had this, mm -hmm. and you had probably more. I mean, I've never seen a better training facility inside any dealership ever. Uh, so kudos to you. You've got your own in-house video, your own in-house digital, your own in-house ad agency. Where is the break between look at what we do and look at what we can do versus this is what I need help with? And it's all under the same organization. The, the biggest obstacle I thought, it's probably what Brian was talking about this morning, is bring your managers on board. And so all of our managers, you know what happens over time, the salespeople were outsmarting managers. They were much better with the CRM tools, mm -hmm. the processes. 
So they could also snow their managers very quickly. Managers have no clue what they were doing, how to hold them accountable. Um, the managers, in the same respect, because they didn't know what the hell they were doing, how could they manage them? So we forced every manager in the group to go through the same sales 101 training for internet leads. If you're going to manage them, you got to know what the hell they're doing. Well, and not just for internet leads, but for everything. I mean, I think yeah. uh, you, if you visit most dealerships and you look at the sales desk for the desk of deals, They've got the DMS open because that's where they're destined to go from. They're not destined inside this year. It's a mix in our group. We still haven't standardized. Yeah, YouTube desk. open, you know, they're not looking at the dashboard. And that's a, the truth is there's no such thing, and I'll talk about it tomorrow, but there's no such thing as accountability or managing without a CRM. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. You can't manage a person without it in, in automotive now because so much deals with task completion. Not even lead attribution for marketing, but task completion. You got it. The biggest thing are the. I feel for the managers, number one, our biggest problem is when I go out to the stores and try and train them, they're pulled towards me in a different direction. They can never focus. Mm -hmm. In the same respect, if I'm being respectful to Eric, he's making money if he's selling a car. So I got to step back when somebody wants to desk with you. And then you bring them to this facility. That's right. So we bring them here where they can be focused. And then we, we have to treat them all as if they're learning from square one. Because if not, they think they're... They're going to feel Gifted. stupid if they act like they did know because they think I should have known. So we taught them all that way. They have core, everybody has quarterly trained. Every manager, every salesperson, every big cop, et cetera. Last month I had all the salespeople. And it takes me four days to get through the entire group rotating through here. And my biggest issue, believe it or not, was the managers are all coming to the sales training. So I'm pulling in extra chairs because now they're getting that motivational and we measure everything. You can watch year over year, especially this year, we put the train across the board, just huge jumps in results. So you're squeezing more bang out of those, your, each dollar you're spending because everybody's training how to do it. The nice thing about this and having multiple projectors, like I did mobile in uh, November, so I'm putting up like a, an iPhone or an iPad up here that I'm doing. They're doing it hands on with me at the desk while I've got a PowerPoint or internet over there. And that hands-on takes it to another level. So walk me through when you say mobile. Are you saying like, because you don't want them to ever reach out or text a customer unless it's through. No, that's we, the best We actually oh. did train on uh, the DPJ and all that. Good. We've yeah. been ahead last a while. Uh, and we were doing a lot of mobile video training. Oh, okay, great. Smart yeah. so I'm just using Apple TV. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you are having them send it. That's the downside of them. Um, right. Right. Because yeah. there's no ability yeah. to capture content and be able to insert into a CRM. Uh, we copied back in for you. Um, so we've got our own gym and showers and locker room and all that stuff. Yeah. Detroit, right? Was that not like What are all the students in this there? Central County. Kevin, are you going to try to sell us memberships? Sure, I can do that. <laughs> Lifetime. Everything runs off five pads in the building, which is a mixed blessing. It's like half time something's wrong with it. It's pretty nice. Nice. Luckily, who deleted my apps? Uh, wait a minute. Let me see if. Uh, who deleted my apps? Take picture. Joe has no idea how Google Glass works. No, <laughs> this is where Jeff, David, and Scott are. Stop recording. Can Enhance. Okay, glass. <laughs> okay, glass. That's what she started doing. Yeah. She had to do that. No. Okay. <laughs> Here he is. This is Scott Bristow. He's Jeff Steinwall, co president. Can we come visit with you? I was just getting ready to. So. Welcome. Thank you. 